In this example, we're asked to find the air pressure at the top of the Burj Khalifa. This is the tallest building in the world currently. Uh, it has an, a height of 828 meters. It's pretty tall, in fact. Uh, if you look at the heights of some of the other buildings, the Willis Tower in Chicago, formerly the Sears Tower, is just over 500 meters tall. So this is quite a bit taller than that. Anyway, we're asked to find uh, what the air pressure is at the top of the Burj Khalifa. We're also asked if there was a pipe containing water that extended from the top of the building, so all the way up at the top here down to the bottom, what would the gauge pressure be in the, of the water at the bottom of the pipe? So let's go ahead and figure this out. We're going to find the air pressure two different ways. One way we're going to do it is just assume a constant air density, so the air being incompressible, and then the other way we're going to do it is we're going to treat the air as an uh, a compressible ideal gas and find the air pressure that way. So let's start first of all assuming that we have a constant air pressure. Let me put a height measurement on here. So we'll say this is height h from the top to the bottom. And so the pressure at the top there would be the pressure at the bottom which will just be uh, you know atmospheric pressure sea level so standard temperature and pressure there. And then we're going up a distance of h, so we're going to subtract out the weight, the specific weight of the air over that distance h. So the idea here is we're starting at sea level down here, presumably close to sea level, and then we're moving up a distance h, so we're going to subtract out the weight of that air up to a distance h to get to the top. So let's plug in some numbers here. So the pressure, standard temperature and pressure, that'll be 101.33 kilopascals absolute. The density of air, we're assuming that it's incompressible. It'll have a density of 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. Gravity, of course, is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then we said the height was 828 meters. So when you plug in those numbers, which will get the pressure at the top, to be 91.4 kilopascals absolute, or if you like to do it in terms of a ratio, and let's move this up, pressure at the top divided the pressure at the divided by the pressure at the bottom, that comes out to be about 0 0.902. So it's about 90% of sea level pressure. So it's dropped, you know, 10%. It's a substantial amount. But we've also gone 828 meters, so we've gone up quite a ways. Now that's assuming that the air is incompressible. Now let's do the same problem, but assume the air is compressible, and specifically an ideal gas. Now there was a, a video lecture on this, and what you'll find is that, that the pressure at some altitude y will be the pressure at y is equal to zero, so standard temperature of pressure, times one minus beta y over t, when y is equal to zero, that's sea level, raised to the g over r beta, where r is the gas constant and beta is what's called the, the lapse rate. It's basically just how the beta here is just how the rapidly the temperature drops off with altitude. So again, let's put in some numbers here. P at y is equal to zero is just our pressure at standard temperature and pressure, which we had up above. Uh, the lapse rate, or beta, is 0 0.00650 Kelvin per meter. And the temperature at y is equal to zero, this is just the temperature at standard temperature and pressure is 288 Kelvin, or 15 degrees C. Now that may not be such a good assumption out in the um, Middle East where the Burj Khalifa is, but we'll just use the standard temperature and pressure for this. And then the gas constant for air is 286.9 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And again, Y here will just be our height H. So we can plug those numbers in, and what you'll get will be P at uh, the top, you know, Y is equal to H. And if I divide through by the pressure at standard temperature pressure, just to give us an easy way to compare, this comes out to be uh, 
point zero point nine zero six. So you can see if we assume that the air is incompressible, we get that value, but if we treat it as compressible, it's only different by a very small amount out to the third decimal point here. So even though we've traversed a distance of 828 meters, whether we treat the air as being incompressible or compressible doesn't make much of a difference. You have to go to really large elevation differences for the compressibility of gases to become significant. So, um, so we can generally treat the air as being incompressible over you know, relatively small distances, like on the order of uh, you know, a few hundred, well, in this case, up to 1,000 meters. It really doesn't change very much. Let's do the last part of this problem. We're asked to find the gauge pressure if we had a water column that started up here and then went all the way down here. So if we had a column of water, what would be the pressure, gauge pressure specifically at the bottom? So that's just another application of the hydrostatic pressure distribution. So the gauge pressure would be the pressure we start with, which we'll just say is atmospheric pressure, and then would add in rho of the water was g times h. And since it's gauge pressure, I'm not going to put in the atmospheric pressure part since that's zero. And here, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Gravity is the same thing. H is the, you know, gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. H is 828 meters, and when you plug in these numbers, you'll get that the gauge pressure at the bottom would be 8.12 times 10 to the sixth pascals, which is about 80.2 atmospheres. It's actually a, a really high pressure that you'd have if you had a, just a single column of water over that uh, long distance. So uh, you can see that the densities of water being so much higher than the density of air results in much larger pressure differences.